Good day folks, uh, this video is a big shout out and a thank you to Radio Nut 63. Some of you are interested in radio stuff, Radio Nut 63, Daryl. Go and check out Daryl's page and uh, Daryl's website, web, uh, YouTube channel. He does a lot of stuff with radio. Anyway, some years ago Daryl found this. But uh, the story of how he found it, he encouraged me today to tell the story. Anyway, it was this guy named Jack. And Jack found a copy of this schematic to build a power supply. And I believe someone else had it and gave him a photocopy of it. And it came from 73 Magazine, August 1983, page 9. Anyway, Jack got to work and built the power supply. And it served him for years, well, faithfully. He enjoyed it, and poor old Jack passed away. After Jack was gone, his wife, his widow, and her daughter, apparently, were selling off all of Jack's stuff. So, I'll, this other guy, I'll call him Bob. Bob bought the power supply. Bob didn't have the power supply very long, and he messed it up. I'm not sure exactly what it done. He crossed it up somehow, but anyway, he broke it. And he didn't know what to do with it, so of course he brought it to Daryl. <laughs> and Daryl fixed it. But when Daryl took the cover off and first looked inside and done the visual, neatly folded up and tucked away inside the power supply tucked down next to the transformer where it wouldn't fall out was a photocopied sheet of page 9. <laughs> so Daryl got more photocopies made and he gave me one. This was around the millennia, around the turn of the millennium. It's give or take a year or two, but it's around that time. So I got a copy of this uh, schematic and uh, I thought it was great. And it is. It's a great uh, schematic for anybody to build a, a power supply, and it doesn't involve any real complicated circuitry. And uh, I'll show you my rendition of it now shortly. We'll go through the uh, schematic, and uh, I'll explain that in a little more detail. So we'll bring it in a little bit closer here. And starting off, 115 volts comes in, you got a switch and you got a fuse, and then it's your transformer. Then it goes through the rectifier. The rectifier changes it from AC over to DC. The positive end is here, the negative end of your DC is here. It goes back this way and on out to your output. The positive from your rectifier and, of course, through your capacitor bank feeds the input of your voltage regulator. This is called for LM340T-15. I use the 7815. It's basically the same thing. The other piece of circuitry that's a little bit different is an SCR1, 2N4441, and the replacement I had to get for that was an NTE number, 5465. Other than that, these are 3055s, uh, you know, very... Uh, common for power supplies, power outputs, and so on. And the resistors are regular resistors, uh, electrolytic capacitors, except for these power output resistors, they're done with uh, ceramic 5 watts. So as it comes in, it gets uh, regulated by your voltage regulator. Now you may question why this is a 15 volt reg voltage regulator when you're looking for 13.8 volts. Well, it, there is some voltage drop as it the voltage progresses through the circuit, through these pass resistors and these current amp outputs. Now this is laid out in sections. This first section from this dotted line right down along here, this is where you can build just one section and have it 5 amp. Each section of this adds another 5 amps of current onto your existing circuit. So it's a series of parallel cascading current amplifiers 
that are all lumped in, as many as you want. Now, I didn't go with 30, I only went to 25. <laughs> because that's all the outputs that I had at the time. And they were all scrounged as well. I did end up buying the regulator, and I did end up buying the SCR. All the rest of it was all scrounge parts, and I'll show you that now shortly. There's a pin out there of your voltage regulator. And uh, as it comes in, like I say, it uh, goes through your voltage regulator, then through this transistor there, and then your uh, output, uh, and then that's your five, five amps. Continue with on. This is the unregulated voltage, comes along here and collects, uh, connects sorry, into the collector of the transistors. And the uh, voltage out from your regulators, the regulated voltage, that feeds into the bases of these transistors. And then, of course, the emitters are all the output from the transmitters. It goes down through these pass, pass resistors and uh, then on to your final output. So it's a relatively simple circuit for anybody to uh, follow. And these parts are easy to get anywhere, you know. I'll uh, give you a little look there now on how the uh, <laughs> how it looks or how I interpreted this design. Usually with schematics, they, and, and the schematic and the practical are not generally laid out the same or may not look like the same layout. However, when, in my uh, interpretation of this, I did endeavor to make it look pretty close to the same. Anyway, here's the, uh, the power supply. We're going to uh, plug in the AC. Plug in the AC here. Get the AC uh, attached. We'll turn it on. You can see a little uh, LED lit up there. It's uh, kind of hard to see with the light on. Now DC voltage. Turn on a thousand volts. Show it thirteen. Thirteen point nine. Put it down on a twenty volt scale. 13.89, which is uh, pretty much acceptable to ro run most any kind of 12 volt radios because the voltages in vehicles are somewhere around 14 volts uh, and can be up to 16 at times of charging. So it, uh, there's your uh, the output voltage. And we'll turn that off. Get this out of the way. And we'll have a closer look at the inside. See the transformer here. Here we go. Uh, that's your AC in. Then it goes through the rectifier bridge right here. Then your filter capacitor bank here. Then it steps over to the uh, voltage regulator. here and all your current app outputs you see how the collector is all joined together and you can see the uh, ceramic resistors five watt ceramic resistors that I've uh, have installed so I've mounted pretty much the whole circuit most of it on that heat sink you see them on the back of the heat sink I put two fans on this little uh, power supply they're computer fans and they're meant to run on 12 volts if you run them on 14 volts, they'll run really, really hot and really, really loud. <laughs> so I ran two of them, uh, I wired two of them in series, so each one of them is run on just less, just under 7 volts each. So they'll run uh, much quieter, a little bit slower, 
but a lot quieter and uh, won't make that roaring power supply noise that you usually hear from your cooling fans. So that's about it folks. Uh, another look here. All laid out on that one heat sink. You can see the uh, Right, they're all laid out there, and the way the two fans are mounted. If you do use two fans and try to wire them in series, make sure that they got roughly about the same current draw. That way they'll run at about equal speeds. If they're mismatched on the current draw, one will run faster than the other one. So uh, two of them are running roughly about the same. We'll take a, a little look underneath. You can see the AC cord. in here goes to the switch here we got a fuse as well goes up to the circuitry the DC comes down got a fuse on the output here and uh, I got output binding posts here in the front as well now I did space them apart that's one peeve of mine that I didn't like about a lot of commercial made power supplies they're uh, they got the uh, positive and, and the negative really close together so uh, Sometimes you got to fumble with it if you got to change something. So I don't. I um, spaced them far enough apart whereby it'd be easy to get at. For lower current stuff, on the back here, I got this RCA uh, cluster RCA jacks. And uh, for low current, 12 volt DC, I'll just wire on an RCA jack and plug it in there. So it's good for low current devices. I wouldn't put any high current drawer on it. You can see the way that's done there. So uh, there's a couple of little uh, add-ons and of course the uh, LED to show that it's on, you know. That little guy, he's... Uh... Most of this stuff is all scrapped. I did buy those two parts I mentioned, but the rest of it is scrapped. Uh, Daryl went and gave me this uh, old aluminum chassis. This is plexiglass I got somewhere. Of course the fans are out of an old, com are old computers. Uh, so these, uh, this here is out of an old stereo, and I think this piece of uh, stuff here was out of a stereo as well. Um, the front here, the black piece, this was a uh, top of an old VCR that I cut down. You can see the top of it, I didn't cut it really straight, did I? <laughs> and there's another plexiglass piece goes over this for the top as well. And these handles, that come off of something else, switch come out of an old stereo. Uh, these did come out of a power supply, a smaller 5 amp that was blowed up. And that came out of a wall wart, one of those power supplies that you just plugs into a wall socket. So I gently took the sticker off and <laughs> stuck it on there. <laughs> so it's all uh, homemade, all made out of junk except for the voltage regulator in there and the SDR. And you can see that down there. So, uh, you know, mostly junk. Now, even if you had to buy the parts, well, certainly you could still uh, put together reasonably, you know. But you may be able to do scrounge, and you could tell they're not all exactly the same. <laughs> all the output transistors not all exactly the same because they're different shapes from different manufacturers. But they all are, uh, are uh, equally compatible, we'll say. I want to thank you for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little trip down memory lane. Daryl encouraged me to do the video, so I said, yeah, I'm going to do it, and uh, and why not? So I hope you enjoyed, hope you liked the video, and uh, take care. We'll uh, catch you the next time. Bye-bye.